Gallon Camps present Pat Novak for Hire. Cinderella lost a shoe and so she got a maid. The modern miss has learned from this in Gallon Camp shoe raid. More miles to a Gallon Camp. Yes, Gallon Camps, the family shoe stores with the yellow fronts, the largest shoe chain in the West with stores from Canada to Mexico to serve the West. G-A-L-L-E-N-K-A-M-P-S, Gallon Camps present Pat Novak for Hire. Sure, I'm Pat Novak, for hire. That's what the sign out in front of my office says, Pat Novak, for hire. Down on the waterfront in San Francisco, you don't get prizes for being subtle. If you want to make a living down here, you've got to get your hand in the till any way you can. You rob Peter to pay Paul, and then you put it on the cuff. It's a happy life if you don't mind looking up at a headstone, because sooner or later you draw trouble a size too big. I found that out Tuesday night. It was about 11 o'clock when I came out of the office and I started down the waterfront. It was raining and the street was as deserted as a warm bottle of beer. As I got near the corner, an old man stepped out of the darkness and started across the street. It was a short trip because a car started up down the street and the old man couldn't have made it with a pocket full of aces. <laughs> Well, I started over to him. The car slowed down for a moment and then turned the corner and disappeared. As it passed under the street light, I caught a glimpse of the license plate in a dull, surprised way, the way you'd grab a feather out of an angel's wing. I bent over the old man and I rolled him on his back. He was breathing hard as I cushioned his head. Please help me. Can you please help me? Well, that's a big order, mister. Uh, I must talk to you. Well, if you've got any good quotes, you better get them off your chest fast. My pocket. Inside my pocket. You please put your hand... In here? Yeah. Sure. Two envelopes. What about them? One is money for you. You have the other one. So far. The other one, please keep sealed. And you will give it to... John St. John. John St. John? Yeah. Well, where does he live? You don't understand. It's not... I want to tell you. You don't understand. Well, he was right on that one. I didn't understand a thing except he slipped out of my arms and stopped paying taxes. I dragged him over to the side and I went through his stuff. There was nothing there, no identification, just a card with an address on the other side of town. I opened the envelope and $300 tumbled into my breast pocket. The other one was sealed. There was no name on it, but up in the corner there was some kind of marking. It looked like two crosses spliced together. There wasn't anything I could do for him except pray, and I owe some back dues. So I went over to my office and called police headquarters. I told him where the old man was, and then I checked in the phone book. There was no John St. John listed. Well, so I looked up the only honest guy I know, an ex-doctor and a boozer by the name of Jocko Madigan, a good guy... But to him, a hangover is the price of being sober. I finally found him singing in a Mason Street bar. Dinky, dinky, dobby, sure, dinky, dinky, day. Jocko, the fine Jocko, story. I want to talk to you. Ah, Patsy, you're just in time for the counterpoint. I'm singing a song, a little sentimental thing from my childhood. It'll keep. I got a problem, Jocko. You'll always have a problem, Patsy, because you can't keep out of trouble. You know that, don't you? You have no self-control. Yeah, all right, Jocko. You have no more self-control than a bucket of mercury dumped in a marble staircase. All right, Jocko, check the bright talk. I just saw a guy get killed. You're like some violent disorder in nature, some large but unprofitable storm. You keep whirling in circles, Patsy. And if you ever go more than ten feet in one direction, it's because some woman is nine feet away. Then it begins all over again. Are you all through? Yes. Get to the point. That's another of your troubles. You never get to the point. Some old guy was killed down on the Embarcadero. He checked out 50 feet away from me. Who killed him? I don't know. And why do you care? Professional jealousy? Some car came out of nowhere and clipped him. You sure it wasn't an accident? Yeah, just like the fall of France. 
Will you stop kneeling me, Jocko? I told you the guy got killed. He was murdered right in front of me. I gotta find a guy called John St. John. How St. John? John St. John. I don't feel like vaudeville tonight, Jocko. The old man gave me $300 to deliver a letter. I made him a promise. Well, you can break it now with only the slightest risk. I got the license number of the car. I want you to hop down and look it up. Then check at headquarters to see if the guy's got a record. I don't like policemen. They depress me. Check it. I gotta go out here to this address. Here. Uh Uh-huh. Well, what kind of neighborhood is it? Well, it's not exactly a neighborhood. It's more like an architectural afterthought, a lingering defense against the early California bear. All right, all right, no speeches. Just check on that license plate. Now, if I'm not at my place, try this address here. Yes, that's always very interesting at this time of night. Well, goodbye, lover. Well, Jocko was right about the neighborhood. When I left him, I doubled by my place and I left the envelope. I put it in another envelope and stashed it behind some books. Then I headed out to look up John St. John. It must have been about midnight when I got there, and it was the kind of a neighborhood where a for-rent sign reads like a ransom note. I found the place, though. It was an old rooming house, a third-floor apartment. I knocked at the door, and when she opened it, I knew it was time to wire home for money. If they pick a Miss Blowtorch of 1946, she'll be right up there in the running. A tall, blonde blister with lots of Fahrenheit. She stood there leaning against the door, smiling and looking at you as if you had gold-plated muscles. Gave you a weak feeling where your dinner ought to be. And her voice came right out of the oven. Well, you're out kind of late. Yeah. I'm looking for a guy named John St. John. Oh? Won't you come into my cobweb? Sure. For a spider, you're nice and chubby. Well... A Spider-Man. My name's Lee Norton. You want to write it down? Hmm. I'm Pat Novak, and I'm looking for a guy named John St. John. You seem to be running a temperature on the subject. I don't know a John St. John. Well, I found a dead man lugging around your address. Why? I don't know. Perhaps he admired me from afar, like a sunset or something. No, he stopped admiring sunsets about 20 years ago. I see. What are you, the avenging angel? He gave me a sealed envelope. And you were supposed to give it to a man named John St. John, That's huh? right. He gave me 300 bucks to ease the pain. Yeah, I figured that. You don't look like the charitable type. He was a nice old guy, so I'm going to find his boy. Perhaps I could help you. You got a clear, fast track. Let's see you go. I told you I don't know John St. John, but I'll do this much. Yeah, I know. You're going to be big-hearted and offer to take that letter just in case you ever meet someone named John St. John. Huh? Now, did you pay the rent this month? Keep the kettle on. I'll only be a moment. Hello, Lee. If we're early, just give us a magazine. No. Come on in. Thank you. Well, just enough for bridge. You're right. You're only gone a moment. Who are your friends? Don't suck. Did they lock the manhole before they left home? His name's Novak. Yeah, that's a pretty name. Don't rhyme with anything, but it's pretty, huh, Joe? Yeah, it's all right. Let's have the letter, Novak. You got hold of a bad rumor, fella. Uh, The one I got's good. Let's have it. I don't want to strain your mind, Junior, but try to understand I don't have a letter. Ask him again. Go on home, mister. You're not going to get anything out of me except a small tip. Now, if you're a good boy, I'll give you a nickel for your friend, too. All right, Joe. (laughs) Now, hold him up. Yeah, just a minute. He's got a head of hair. Hold him up. All right. All right, Mike. That's enough. That's enough. All right, baby. Don't look so sorry. You can't have everything. We'll be back to Pat Novak in just a moment. Have you ever worn uncomfortable shoes? Perhaps the size was wrong or the shoe was the wrong shape for your foot. But no matter why, there's nothing more uncomfortable than shoes that don't fit. The more you're on your feet, the more you know it. Gallant Camp specialize in properly fitting shoes for the whole family, right from the toddler's first important step. And Gallant Camp's good shoes are built to give support to active feet. Listen to an authority on shoes. He's Mr. John F. Stahl, 64 years young, a retired postman with a hobby. (laughs) You guessed it, he likes to walk. He says, I've been on my feet most of my life. Since 1935, when I retired as a letter carrier, I walked 10,000 miles. I just walked to San Francisco from Trinity Center, California. That was 410 miles. Walking is fun, but take it from me, you must have good shoes. That's why I stick to gallon camps. Gallon camps are good shoes. And there you have it from a man who knows. Gallon camps are good shoes. 
That's why Gallon Camps are the West's favorite shoes, and Gallon Camps' tremendous volume makes possible Gallon Camps' reasonable prices. For style, for quality, for reasonable price, for good shoes for the entire family, visit the stores with the yellow fronts. Mr. Stahl walked 410 miles to shop at Gallon Camps, but there's a store in your neighborhood. And now back to Pat Novak for hire. You know, it's easy to sleep if you got the right friends. When those two gun-ups were through, I hit the floor and made Rip Van Winkle look like an insomnia victim. I didn't like the floor, but it was in better shape than my face. I don't know how long I was there, but it must have been a couple of hours. I rolled over once and tried to get up, but it was like trying to barbecue a cake of ice. There was a sick, sweet smell in the room. I tried to place it, but my nose was out on strike, so I went to sleep again. Next thing I knew, it sounded like New Year's Eve. Here you go, Patsy. Up on the couch. (coughs) What's the matter? Nothing. If you're a kitchen stove, the room's full of gas. Oh, some of my playmates, I guess. Well, you weren't at the apartment, so I tried here. Yeah. What time is it? Two o'clock. Who got the quaint idea of the gas chamber? A girlfriend. It was love at first sight. Did she get the letter? I left it home. You're getting smart. Yeah, $300 worth. They lifted my dough. Well, you couldn't use it where you were going. I uh, checked on that hit-and-run card. It's listed under the name of Sidney Bronson. Has he got a record? No. Well, everybody's a beginner. Well, let's go home. It'll be dull, but you'll get used to it. (laughs) Wait until I wash my hands. Sure. Patsy. Yeah? What did your girlfriend look like? Was she the lively type? Yeah. Why? What's the matter? Because she's not anymore. Yeah. Those gunsels play rough. She's kind of pretty. What did she do besides send out vibrations? I don't know. But she knew all about John St. John. Yeah? She picked up a bait like a hungry bass. Also, look at that ring. How did you get around to that? The insignia on it. It's the same one that's on the envelope. Spliced crosses. Let's go home, Patsy. The police will be here. Yeah. Even Hellman will know she's dead. Come on, we be... On your way out the door, Jocko, try it sideways because I think it's blocked. Hello, Novak. You look pale. It's my color scheme. What do you care, Hellman? None. She looks peaceful. Yeah. Be quiet or you'll wake her up. Now, oh, tiptoe. She always cut her throat before she goes to sleep. Who is she, Novak? I don't know. It's awful cozy here for a bunch of perfect strangers. I don't know every dead girl in town, Hellman. You'll have to check. You can still write, can't you, Novak? Huh? That's all you'll need down at headquarters. Come on. Get out of the haze, Hellman. You don't know who's dead yet, but you're going to book somebody. Yeah. What are you doing up here, praising the joint? I came up to find a guy named John St. John. She doesn't look like a guy named John St. John. She was my lead. I came up here to smell out a rat. She had a half Nelson on me when two gunsels walked in. They came up to fix the gas meter, I think. You stay out of this. I'll make every effort. Now, if you're smart, you'll fingerprint this place, Hellman. Those boys were cute. They've been in somebody's jail. I'll handle my job. You stick to murder. It'll go a long way to pin this on me, Hellman. I can go a long way, Novak. Not with what you've got to drag. We get a call in the middle of the night, come up here and find you standing over a dead girl. That's right. And you want me to sprinkle powder all over. Back up and take a better look, Novak. The view's fine, Hellman. And if you'll take a good look, you'll know why. You haven't got anything to give the DA except a slim lead and a fat hand. You're going to need help. Not on this one. You need help to find the street. Come on back to center, Hellman. Even with both hands, you couldn't... Yeah. Oh, forget it. So take the medicine like a good boy. I'm not going to walk out and let the two of you tour the town. I'm going to book one or both of you on a murder charge. All right. Book Jocko here, then. I love you in a generous mood. You got a string, then, Hellman. Somebody's got to find John St. John. Uh, Who's going to find Jocko? Stop worrying. I'll bail you out. You haven't got the right size heart, Novak. You'll let him die on the vine. Helen, sometimes you're guilty of unexpected wisdom. I know it's reflex action, but it's consoling anyway. I want you, Novak. I want you bad. I'll take this guy as a down payment, but I'm going to close out with you. Remember that. I will. All right. Come on, mister. Wait a minute. Patsy, you're not going to let him lug me off like this? What else can I do? The guy likes you. Hmm. 
Now, it was a bum curve to throw Jocko, but somebody had to dig us out of a hole, and Jocko wasn't the boy. You can't shovel dirt with a bar rag. I had no idea where to start. There were two murders, and they were both tied up with John St. John. He didn't look like a good guy to know. There was that insignia, too. The one on the letter and the girl's ring. Oh, sure, it could be coincidence, but that's what they said about Bluebeard. The only thing I could do was open that letter, so I went back to the apartment. I didn't have to turn on the light. They were running in pairs tonight. She was sitting there on the couch, proud of a pair of long, silk legs and smiling like a guy who knows he's got a million bucks in the bank. She was blonde, too. A little more lemon juice, maybe, but blonde anyway. She was nice and comfortable, and I got the idea she'd just signed a lease. Good evening. How do you do? Not very well so far. A sly remark, Mr. Novak? No, I'm just bringing you up to date. Your girlfriend's dead. Yes? Yeah. I just want to let you know the gas jet's out in the kitchen. Oh, don't shout. I'd like you better if you purred. I don't need your vote. Who's John St. John? I don't know John St. John. Is he worth breaking your heart over? There's a good guy down on the clink sweating out a murder rap for me, so I want John St. John. Mm, you've got nice friends. Who's Sidney Bronson? How does that fit into the picture? This started with a waterfront corpse. The leftovers belonged to an old guy that was hit by a car. The car's registered in the name of Sidney Bronson. Mr. Novak, you seem so intense. It's a pity to waste it on random speculation. I told you... I got a friend in the jug. Mm, loyalty's a nice trait. One of your nicest. Yeah. You're a pretty thing, Patsy. Well, don't get fooled by the rapper. I'll take a chance. Anybody ever brief you on trouble? You're hard to see that far away. Come on over and focus, Patsy. Yeah. You're pretty, Patsy. You look like you want to bill a sale. I'm the gentle kind, Novak. I'd just like to break your ribs. Go ahead. I can get a brace. Come here. Mr. Novak, I'll let you do a swell rumba. Yeah? What's on your mind? What you're going to say when you find out about this gun. Huh? That's right, sweetheart. My finger isn't hollow. Back up and take a look at the gun. Hmm. Well, you got to that purse, huh? That's right. Well, you've ruined my confidence. I'll give you a testimonial. In the meantime, I want the letter. You go after everything the same way. I want the letter. Well, it's in the desk. Come on. Right here in the top drawer. <clears throat> oh, let go. Stay away from me. I'm already here, lady. <gasps> Come on, oh. all right. Drop the gun, <laughs> sis. Drop it. Well, you can let go of my arms now. Well, that's your version. L let go of me. Let go of me, I... Oh. Oh. What was that for? A little something on the house, now beat it. Well, you've ruined my confidence. You're lucky. Go on home. You won't change your mind about that letter? No. Well, suit yourself. I'll be going. Oh, Patsy. Yeah? I can't help you on John St. John, but I wouldn't worry about that fella, Sidney Bronson. Huh? Why? Because... I'm Sidney Bronson. See you soon. That began to look like a big, fat, well-fed double cross. I had to find out what was in that letter, so I made tracks for the bookcase. All I could do was browse because the letter was gone. Well, things didn't look rosy for me or Jocko. I was about to buy a file and bake a cake when the phone rang. Hello, Novak. Oh, Hellman. The coroner got a report on that dead girl. She died at 12.30. Now, that's pretty close. What's he got, a stopwatch? Fifteen minutes either way. Those fingerprints panned out, too. Yeah? A couple of L.A. strong-arm men. Well, that's new for L.A. You got a call out? We already picked them up. Your favorite's named Welcome Dangliers. Well, I could make a joke. I already got one. They're set up with a perfect alibi for 12.30. Well, that means I killed the girl. Nobody's arguing. I got some more news. Yeah? I'm out at the Seal Rocks. Well, you've got the figure for it. We just found an envelope floating around the water. It's one of yours. You better come on out. You found an envelope? So what? So the envelope turns out to be in some guy's pocket. Come on out. <laughs> Well, that only meant one thing. Whoever took the envelope out of my place got popular. It was getting late, so I grabbed a cab and rode out to the beach. When I got there, Hellman was standing down in the water. He had Jocko with him. The surf was rolling in, and Jocko wasn't much better. Hello, 
Joe Percy. Hello, Jocko. How's jail? Dry. Thanks for coming, Novak. You're sweet. Where's the envelope? Here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same one. That makes you look good. There was a letter in here. Did you take that with the guy's money, Hellman? You got all there is. Hmm. Hmm. This guy on the beach is the third one. It's my opinion the case will solve itself. We're running out of people. Who is the guy? His name's Walter Avery. Here's his stuff. Yeah, what's left? Well, the spliced cross really gets around. Eh? Keeps bobbing up. Here it is on this guy's fountain pen. I'm going to run this guy through the morgue, and then I'm going to look you up, Novak. Yeah? Sure. We want you done with us. That's right. I'll introduce you to all the best people. Good night, lover. It was close to five, so I tagged by my place for some sleep. I tossed around like a fish on the living room rug. Hellman called about nine to throw more dust in my eyes. He said one of the airlines had a passenger to Portland named Walter Avery. Just to make it tough, the guy made the 12 o'clock plane and got off at Portland. I had left field all to myself. I got dressed and I looked up Sidney Bronson's number. There was no answer, so I went over. The place was locked and I looked up the janitor. He wasn't going to let me in, but it turned out that his wife had a birthday coming up. Well, I found something in the apartment. It was a card and it said, Bellcrest Sanitarium. And down in the corner there was a guy's name. Dr. Emil Schoenig, psychiatrist. Vienna, without the walls. The Bellcrest Sanitarium was down on the peninsula, so I borrowed a car and headed down that way. Everything was fine until I got in the front door. They didn't even let me register. I woke up on a couch in Schoenig's office. It was dark outside, and my left arm was throbbing like a love story in a woman's magazine. The radiator sitting beside me was Sidney. You're a deep sleeper. I think I got some help. What happened to my arm? Hypodermic. You only need one arm, anyway. In your case, I need a spare. Who did it? Dr. Schoenig. Oh, he's a darling boy. Where is he? Out on the phone, trying to figure out what to do with you. What's that make me, a patient? Mm, that's one way of putting it. You made things easy. We were coming to you for the letter. Hmm? You want to try that over again? We were on our way when you stumbled in. You're wrong, Sid. Somebody's given you a fast pitch. That letter was gone when you were up at my place. I don't want a bum rib, Patsy. I want that letter. The trail in the field, Angel. I told you, the letter's gone. A guy by the name of Walter Avery took it out of my place. Walter Avery? That's right, and somebody thanked him. They found him this morning, making like a dead seal. Walter Avery left for Portland last night. A plant, sweetheart. You better read up on your friends. Yeah. Thanks, Betsy. I told you to watch him, Sid. You had more shots. What's the difference? Oh, none, I suppose. Uh, why don't you mix us a drink while I talk to Mr. Novak? I'll be right with you. Well, Mr. Novak, you're one of my best patients. Well, that's because I like your needles. You better go easy on that drink. Yes? Why? Well, you'll get drunk and run somebody down the way you did that guy on the waterfront. Oh? A good guess. You should be proud. That's a good, sensible, final emotion. Here's your drink, Emma. Thank you, my dear. As to you, Mr. Novak. Sorry, there's no drink for you, Mr. Novak. He probably will be. Huh? Forget it. Emil, I talked to Mr. Novak before you came in. He thinks you're a heel. He does. And so do I. I can stand it. He told me about Walter Avery. I'm sorry about that. Walter got that letter. You killed him and took it. I was supposed to blunder around until you got rid of me, too. That's a bum joke, Emil. You're getting hysterical. With laughter, Emil. You put one of your boys on the plane. Only Novak aired the wash too fast. Suppose I did. Somebody ought to bring you up to date, Sydney. You've been hanging on too long. The free ride's over. I might as well tell you now you're all through. I carried the whole bunch along and... <coughs> and I'm all through. <coughs> Steady, Emma. What's the matter with me? <coughs> What's the matter with me, Sid? Give him a hand, Novak. He just got a bad drink. You wouldn't do that, Sid. I'm full of surprises. You got a stomach full of poison. You got a stomach full of poison in 15 seconds, Emma. <coughs> Put down that gun, Emma. I want you to, Sid. Please, Emma, put down the gun. I'm a selfish fellow. <coughs> this happens kind of fast for you, fellow. Lots of noise, huh, Patsy? Yeah. I'll get you a pillow. I'd rather have your lap. Uh, you get mercy, not love, baby. Yeah. 
Thanks for small favors. How do I look? Not so good. That was the three and two pitch. Yeah, I had it coming up. I'll tell you about John St. John. I know. There was no such guy. That's right. It was the name of the group. Those spliced crosses? Yes. You found out a little late, but it's always that way. That's the way I found out about you. Yeah. I had a funny little hunch about you and me. I found out a little late. But I know now, Patsy. Does that help? Well, John St. John was the name of an organization buying and selling government information. That old man tried to tell me, but he checked out too fast. I began to figure something like that when those spliced crosses started showing up. Shoney killed the old man in Sidney's car. He couldn't stop because I was around. The two girls and Walter Avery were both in on the deal. Shoney knew who I was when he saw me go into my office. He trailed me to my place and left Avery there to look for the letter. He killed that girl up in the rooming house, and then he found out she didn't have the letter. When Avery showed up, he took it away from him and threw him to the fish. He was trying to shake Sidney by sending her up to my place after he had the letter. The scheme went haywire when I showed up at the sanitarium. He was trying to work himself out of that one when the payoff came. John St. John? Well, right from the start, Jocko said he was either dead or in the state pen because anybody with a name like John St. John would have killed his parents as soon as he got old enough to find out about it. We'll return in a moment to find out what bothered Inspector Hellman. But now it's Cinderella time. Cinderella lost a shoe and so she got a maid. The modern miss has learned from this in gallon camp she'll rate. A pretty face, a graceful figure, lovely shoes. That's a combination that no man can resist. What a delightful feeling to know that from the top of your head to the tip of your toes... You are the picture of glamorous perfection. Here's what Marilyn Buford, Miss America 1946, says. Probably the most fun of being chosen Miss America is modeling the gorgeous clothes. What girl wouldn't be thrilled to select costume after costume from a collection of America's leading designers? And after seeing the importance they attach to the right shoes for every costume, I'm glad I learned about gallon caps years ago. Yes, Marilyn, there's magic in a pair of shoes, as every woman knows. And having the right shoes is no longer a luxury thanks to Gallon Camps, the home of lovely shoes at shh, reasonable prices. And that's why Miss America's favorite store is the favorite store of America's misses. Cinderella lost a shoe and so she got a maid. The modern miss has learned from this in Gallon Camp she'll rate. And now back to Pat Novak. Oh, it worked out all right. They found the letter out at Shoney's place, and there were some plans for jet planes and a few other trifles. Hellman asked only one question. How come Shoney didn't kill me before I could talk to the girl? <laughs> it's always that way with a guy who commits murder. Either he goes too far or he doesn't go far enough. Be sure to join us next Sunday evening and every Sunday, same time, same station for radio's newest show, Pat Novak for Hire. And don't forget the store with the yellow front is the Gallon Camp Shoe Store. Gallon Camp Shoes are good shoes. There's something about them you'll like. Franklin Evans speaking. This is ABC, the American broadcast.